Whenever you hear the slogan, eat fresh, only one food chain comes to mind, and it's Subway. The company's motto is simple to comprehend and mostly accurate. After all, when compared with other fast food restaurants, Subway is fresher. Subway was one of the first chains to use an open kitchen setup where the ingredients were visible to the customers. The sandwich is then prepared in front of the customer in real time. Subway may have the exact format today, but so many things have changed in 50 years. Despite having 45,000 locations across 100 countries and dominating the market in terms of volume, Subway nevertheless finds it difficult to compete in the modern restaurant industry. If you want to know why Subway declined after touching the peak of success, this video is for you. The beginning of Subway may be traced back to 1965, when Fred DeLuca borrowed $1,000 from a buddy named Peter Buck to create Pete's Super Submarines, a sandwich business in Bridgeport, Connecticut. A year later, the two started a holding company called Doctors Associates to manage the growth of their restaurant. Both partners worked extremely hard, but the business suffered loss, and at the end of the summer, DeLuca only had $6 left. Buck did not surrender, and Buck led the opening of a second restaurant as DeLuca said they desired to create the image of success. But it wasn't until their third restaurant, which they renamed Subway, that the adventurous pair turned a profit, earning $7,000 in its first full year of operation. The two decided it was time to franchise the business model because they needed help maintaining all 16 locations consistently and upholding the same standards. DeLuca, who thought franchising was the way of the future, persuaded Brian Dixon, a friend, to open the first Subway franchise in Wallingford, New Haven. Another 14 franchises appeared that year. DeLuca and Buck kept experimenting with the company until they discovered a recipe for success. The foundation of the Subway franchise system was a commitment to providing customers with high quality, fresh cuisine. DeLuca also adhered to the KISS, keep it simple stupid, philosophy which promotes simplicity as one of the pillars of a successful business. DeLuca's marketing-driven, hands-on strategy enabled Subway to resume its fast proliferation, and in 1978, the chain launched its 100th store. DeLuca worked non-stop to attract new clients to promote expansion. He remembered, I passed by many doors that weren't my customers. I have to sell to these people since dropping the papers in front of these doors don't take additional time. I'm walking by anyhow. The decision to initiate franchising was pivotal in the initial development of Subway, particularly regarding its modest beginning in Connecticut. The Subway brand was able to develop notoriety on a global scale because of franchise options. In 2000, Subway evolved into the first US quick service eatery to function in Tanzania. At the time, more than 2,700 Subway franchises were operating in nations other than the United States and Canada. In the following years, they made an unconventional move and opened storefronts in military installations, hospitals and retail establishments. By December 2008, they had won first place in the Entrepreneur Magazine's 16th annual Franchise 500 rankings. With more than 30,000 stores across 87 countries, they credited their franchisees' continued support for their success. Subway maintained its growth, despite the current global economic downturn. This was made possible by their ongoing review of their tactics. One such instance is altering their focus on 10 markets per growth rates that differ from what was previously predicted. Markets were divided into regions with strong growth potential to achieve this. There are some strategies that Subway management adopted to further grow their business. Let me share the strategies with you. Encouragement by franchisees. By presenting Franchisee of the Year and Development Agent of the Year prizes at annual conventions, Subway encourages franchisees to provide their best efforts. These awards honour franchisees for their actions and successes, including opening additional locations, growing sales and profitability, and receiving great store assessments. Franchisees are also advised on how to manage their enterprises. Franchisee support from Subway development agents is essential to sustaining the expansion of the Subway brand in each location. Setting realistic goals. A significant factor is having a vision and setting objectives to achieve them. This started with DeLuca seeking to have 32 stores in the first 10 years of functioning. As a result of his realisation that he could not have achieved this aim on his own, the idea of franchising was conceived. Then, after attaining his 1990 goal of 5,000 stores, he set his sights on 10,000 stores in 1994. A remarkable achievement that would not have been possible without their objectives, tenacity, 
franchise strategy and willingness to embrace the unexpected. They now have over 40,000 outlets worldwide as of 2020. Awareness of consumer trends. Subway can understand what its customers desire and fulfill those expectations by regularly monitoring consumer trends. Subway increased its selection of delivery services through third parties in response to the rise in delivery choices. Even in-house delivery is offered in some places. They also started a loyalty program to enhance customer relationship management. Customers can use their phones to place orders, accumulate points and redeem prizes. Additionally, Subway has effectively catered to both fast food enthusiasts and those who are health conscious. After realising that customers emphasise value, taste and health, Subway made sure that its product offers met these standards. They outperformed their rivals by placing first overall in all three criteria. A nationwide programme to combat childhood obesity was also started, Fresh Steps Childhood Obesity Prevention. This was accomplished by pushing healthy options on their menu, which underlined their position as the faster, more nutritious option. Localization and flexibility. Adaptability is another important feature. Their offerings are frequently localised to suit customer preferences in various locales while preserving some features, such as menu size and layout, to maintain consistency and familiarity among outlets. Pizza is one of America's favourite dishes. Therefore, Subway pizzas were introduced in Pittsburgh. All of this is done while preserving the customization inherent to the Subway brand, in which consumers select their preferred pizza toppings to create a pizza that is entirely individual to them. Subway Digital Subway developed a digital revolution plan known as Subway Digital to adjust towards the growing trend toward digitization. Their smartphone application is the first in a series of technological innovations that attempt to reinvent the consumer experience for the modern era. Subway can maintain its relevance by including a digital approach, especially with millennials and Gen Zers. They are more connected than ever through their phones and social media sites. In addition to web and app ordering, Subway's Facebook Messenger bot launched in 2017 and lets users customise their meals and make transactions. You might presume Subway's doom is all about Jared Fogel and child pornography. You are correct but that only touched the surface of how Subway became the biggest fast food chain in the US before going out of business. What happened to Subway? Let me tell you in detail. There are a few reasons behind the decline of Subway. In addition to being a visionary, Fred DeLuca was a fascinating individual. He certainly played a role in slumping the Subway. Unfortunately, he was notorious for chasing the girlfriends and wives of his co-workers. According to one source, if you have a skirt and a pulse, he'll chase you. One must say that his management approach was unique. For instance, he sent calendars with himself and other half-naked male executives, which has got to be the wackiest approach to encourage teamwork. However, the employees detested the calendars. DeLuca went beyond his desire for growth. Franchisees expanded their business by opening more locations, something Subway aggressively encouraged. But most of the time, they were extremely close to other, already existent places, as a result, while it expanded, it also reduced its income. In a sense, Subway was killing itself, realising DeLuca's fantasy. The issues persisted after then. When Subway was at its peak, franchises could order fresh local produce daily. However, the policies were altered to once a week or twice if sales were strong. Subway should have updated its menu, but it still needs to. Instead, it stayed almost the same for two decades with the company only concentrating on expanding. The brand struggled to keep up, closing 5,000 outlets by 2021, with no indications of slowing down. The fact that Subway lacked leadership made issues worse. After DeLuca passed away, reports surfaced that his co-founder and wife were eager to cash out because they knew the business wasn't performing well. The renowned magazine included Fogel in the section, Stupid Diets That Work. So that's a compliment. When Subway learned of the tale, the company seized the chance. Jared Fogel was entirely reasonable. He was just a regular guy who had improved his health by eating Subway. Jared even displayed his huge 60 inch wide old jeans to the entire globe. Therefore, the narrative was ideal for advertisements and Fogel rose to fame. Jared became so famous that when there was a break in ads featuring him in 2005, sales plunged to 10%. The partnership seemed to be in danger Although it seemed ideal, the relationship wasn't. By 2010, Fogel had gained £40 back and appeared lost. However, Subway supported him. 
the business used it as a plot device and assisted him in getting back in shape so he could run the New York City Marathon. This was a big success, which is what happened to Subway. Yes, he promised himself to never do it again, but he had succeeded, and Subway was part of the tale. Such advertising campaigns made the corporation turn into an icon, but things would quickly go wrong. Let's review the magic before moving on to the catastrophe. 2011 saw $11.5 billion in revenue for Subway. It dominated the sandwich market in 2013. With 27,000 locations, Subway was the largest chain in the US at its height, whereas McDonald's only had less than 15,000 locations. But everything changed in 2014. If you look at the figures, Subway's decline started in 2013 and 2014. Sales decreased by 3% in 2014 and another 3% in 2020. That well-known market share dropped as a result, falling from 41% in 2013 to 28% in 2020. But why? We've reached that juncture in the video, and the most reasonable thing to do is get the hideous bit out of the way. Sources reported in 2014 that Jared Fogel was accused of having child pornography and having sex with minors. However, they were just rumours. Up until the FBI searched his home and discovered a ton of porn. Fogel went to court as a result, and nothing improved. Subway denied knowing anything about this. They made frantic attempts to escape the controversy, but were absolutely unsuccessful. According to documentation, Fogel solicited a Subway employee underage for sex in 2008. He was reported by an employee, but the business cleared its slate. Their justification was that they had no power to intervene because Fogel wasn't an employee. So what happened to Subway during these unsettled times? According to reports, the business allegedly suppressed concerns about Fogel's actions, including his solicitation of kids at Subway events. A judge gave Fogel a 15-year prison term in 2015. Although Subway's reputation took a severe hit, it could bounce back. After all, such a sizeable business should have been able to handle this with some excellent PR. Sure, Subway had tens of thousands of stores. Still, Subway also had an old-fashioned product, abusive business practices, and was unwilling to change. So, we understand what happened to Subway. Subway contradicts every accusation, including that of Jared Fogel. But the situation is still unclear. Its past at least taught us one crucial lesson. Excessive growth can be destructive. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel as a sacrifice to the gods of the algorithm. Thanks for watching.